Hey folks, Matt from RightOfTheImage.com. As we get close to the August 23rd deadline, we're expecting the Nikon announcement then for our Nikon full-frame mirrorless cameras that we're very much anticipating. I certainly am. I know a lot of you are. There's a lot of uh, excitement out there for these cameras. We've got a recap on technical specs. Um, basically, this is what I think we can expect from Nikon, from what we've been told, both from Nikon and from the leaks and the rumors and all the various information that's out there, kind of trying to distill it here. Um, and this is what I, I expect to see from the Nikon. Basically, uh, as we've discussed, we've got two cameras expected from Nikon, two full-frame mirrorless, one a 45-megapixel full-frame, and the second one a 24-megapixel full-frame. Now, Probably the biggest difference between these cameras besides resolution is that we have heard there will be some autofocus differences. And where I'm thinking the biggest differences here will be is in the dual pixel AF style abilities. In other words, that uh, follow focus in video or live view, the ability to follow a subject smoothly and accurately in video. That's, you know, Canon dual pixel AF technology is... What has started all of this, Sony has caught up, perhaps even surpassed Canon in that area. And this is something that Nikon needs to come to the market with. I think they will. I think we're going to be impressed with what we get. But there has been indications that we'll be getting a little less, perhaps even just in the ability of goodies and the ability to tweak it on the 24 megapixel body in comparison to the 45. This is not typically something Nikon does. For instance, when Nikon came out with, um, when they come out with a flagship body, like say the D5, they have no problem putting that style autofocus system into something like the D850, or um, even if you look older, we have something like the D4, D, um, I'm trying to remember exactly what the parallel was when they were announced, but for instance, the D750 had pretty much the flagship, If I think it was the flagship autofocus system at the time from the top end body so we didn't see a um, an attitude from Nikon that hey we're not going to give you the best of the best you got to buy that at the top end they put it into the lower level bodies like the 750 they've done this in other cameras for a while now especially even in DX we would see like the D300 back in the day had essentially the D3 autofocus system their flagship at the time so I'm expecting that uh, these should be BSI sensors so top advanced technology, um, very good performing. We should expect to see amazing low light ability as well as um, good dynamic range and just good overall performance. Probably on a better level than anything we've seen yet from Nikon, perhaps anything we've seen yet from pretty much any manufacturer. These are going to be the latest and greatest. These are going to be BSI sensors, and Nikon uh, is probably one of the best out there for tweaking a sensor, whether they make it or not, getting the most, eking the best image quality they can out of a sensor. Um, the other thing, we may get um, in-body stabilization, five-axis uh, in-body image stabilization. It's a good, a good bet if Nikon's going to do this, they're going to take the opportunity to do it with mirrorless. Um, I wouldn't expect to see this come out in DSLRs, um, but now that they are going mirrorless, there's a good bet that's going to happen. Um, we've heard various rumors about what memory cards, uh, XQD, CF Express. Personally, I just would like to see them use the high-speed SD cards, XSSD or um, SDHC, I forget which what the new nomenclature is, but I still refer them as SD cards. But the fastest SD cards, I think, would be fine. Um, maybe if you're doing, and I like to see dual slots the same, so I'd prefer SD on both. Um, probably not going to happen, but that would be my preference. Uh, we're expecting a high resolution EVF, um, three point six is what the, the numbers are out here. I think the last time I looked at Nikon mirrorless, that's what that was. 3.6, or not Nikon mirrorless, Nikon rumors are saying that. Um, now, whether that's megapixels or million dots, either way, it's still a, a top-of-the-line, uh, competitive-level, very good resolution EF. Um, we are expecting, as I said, something like the dual pixel F from Canon, as good or better, I would expect. Lots of features packed in with that for video, um, especially in the higher body. Uh, what else we have? Um, I'm expecting just the standard 
autofocus system from the photography end. In other words, not we're not talking about something compatible to dual pixel F at the moment, but just the, the, the actual autofocus system for photos and whatnot. Um, as good or better than anything we've seen from Nikon. Uh, certainly competitive with or better than anything from Sony or Canon. I don't think that's going to be an issue. Nikon's always made very good autofocus systems. It's going to have a high number of AF points, uh, anywhere from 430 to 450 if the rumors are correct. Uh, regardless, we're just going to see an incredible, very fast autofocus system here. Um, there is some conjecture, some back and forth here about the LCD. Are we going to see a tiltable LCD like the D850? Or are we going to see a full very angle LCD like what flips out on, well, for instance, the Panasonic G85 I'm shooting with right here? That would be my preference. I could see Nikon, unfortunately, probably maybe going to a tiltable. I mean, they gave that, that, that gave us that on the D850. On the other hand, these mirrorless are new bodies. It leaves it wide open for them to do what they want to do and set a new precedent here. They could stem the argument from the old DSLR crowd who used to say, oh, those are too easy to damage. Well, these are new bodies. These are new mirrorless. We've put a new super strong hinge on there, and we know from experience that the very angle LCDs don't break. That's not an issue, uh, and this is this is the way mirrorless is. I think that's what they should do is set the precedent there. Remains to be seen. I hope they do that. Um, let's see. We know we're going to get 4K video. I think it would be amazing 4K video. I mean, the D850 is already doing it, so you can expect to see it very good there. And I, I think you can also expect to see uh, not a crippled 4K in the sense of like the Canon M50 where we didn't get their dual pixel AF in the 4K. We'll see 4K with something equivalent to dual pixel AF. Um, in, in both cameras. No problem there. Um, there was some talk about 8K. I don't think we're going to see 8K video, but maybe, you know, time lapse type thing, like similar to what we have in the D850. So that's kind of a summary of our tech specs. Um, I guess the only other thing I'd throw in there is batteries. We've, we've heard battery life, perhaps not as good. Mirrorless would tend not to be. I mean, we're using a lot more, um, especially with the EVF and whatnot. Typically, our mirrorless cameras, even existing ones, do not have the battery life of, I mean, that's been a downfall of Sony, actually. Um, Panasonic, not so much. Um, and there's been rumors that maybe we'll use existing Nikon DSLR batteries in these new mirrorless. So it'll be interesting to see how that is on battery life. But that's the uh, tech specs as we know it at this point before anything official. So a lot of rumors, a lot of leak specs, kind of just summing it all together. In a nutshell, that is me distilling it down to what I think is going to be to what I, I think, I think you're going to see these cameras pretty much what I just summarized. Might be a few surprises in there, but that's essentially what you're going to see. Two cameras with those specs. Uh, what do you guys think? Did I miss something? Did I leave something out? Is there something you don't like about that? Is there something you think, no, that's not the way it's going to be. It's going to be this. Let me know in the comments below. Um, having fun. I, I don't think I've been this excited about a camera announcement in a long time. Nikon, uh, you know, this is a long time coming. I'm hoping Nikon is able to turn the ship around and, and, and stay strong and healthy and, and regrow the business in the camera end of things with these cameras, and I, and I fully expect they will. I think Nikon's really going to impress us here. Um, but let me know about that, too. Do you guys agree with me, or do you think maybe we're going to get a letdown? Let me know in the comments below. Let's discuss it. Just discuss the specs, how good you think these cameras actually are going to be. Let me know. Let's discuss it. I'm always interested to hear your feedback. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.